Okay, uh, so today is a specific way to solve linear differential equations. I'll take second order equations as a good example. This way is called variation of parameters, and it will lead us to a formula for the answer, an integral. So that's the big step, is to get from the differential equation to y of t equal a certain integral. That integral will involve the right-hand side, of course, the source, and if we can do the integration, then we get a complete answer. But in any case, we get a nice form for the answer. Okay, so what's the idea? So we're looking for a particular solution. Partic today is about a particular solution. We have to know two null solutions to get started. So we must know these, y1 and y2, null solutions with f equals zero. And of course, we do know two null solutions when those coefficients b and c are constants. Then we, and we'll do it as a good example, the, as the most important example. Uh, but maybe sometimes we can find the null solutions when b and t are changing in time, time varying, and that's all to the good. That's, those problems are not easy to solve. But it's really constant coefficients that we know it works. Okay, what's the idea? So the idea is to use y1 and y2, the null, the null solutions, if we multiply by constants, we get another null solution by linearity. But the idea is to multiply them by functions. The varying, those constants are not constant, they are varying parameters. So this is be the form of the solution. And we want to find a C1 and a C2, depending on T, so that the equation the differential equation above it is solved. So, of course, I'm going to plug that into the differential equation and find out the conditions on C1 and C2. May I just jump to the result? This will satisfy that equation, knowing we know that y1 and y2 satisfy it with a zero on the right-hand side. So, we just have to, so it's C1 of t and C2 of t that are going to deal with the f. Okay, so here, here's the result after putting it in there. I discover that C1 prime, the derivative of t, comes into it, times y1 plus C2 prime times y2 equaling zero is, it will give me one equation for C1 prime and C2 prime. The other equation for C1 prime times, will multiply Y1 prime plus C2 prime, Y2 prime, of course prime means the derivative, and that, when I'm plugging all this into the equation, I'm going to see an F of T on the right hand side. So I have two equations, and at each time, at each time instant, the, I have two ordinary linear equations, they straight lines in, in the C1, C2 plane, they intersect, we know how to solve the, the most basic problem of linear algebra, solve two equations in two unknowns, and we do that for each t, and we get an answer. So this leads us to C1 and C2. And they depend on t because, well, actually, it leads us to c1 prime and c2 prime, the derivatives. It, it just happens that when we plug it in, the c1 and the c2 themselves disappear because these were null solutions. So we know that c1 constant would be good. But when we put it in there, we get equations that involve C1 prime at each time. So I'll take that away. At each time. All right. Two equations, two unknowns, we solve them. Okay. And then when we solve them, 
we put them back into y of t, and can, I'll just write the answer. I'll just write so I'm not doing all the gory calculations. I'm just going to write the answer. So y of t is going to be, it's, just to be sure, I'm looking here, that's what I'm going to write, and I'm going to put c1 and c2 the, into that c1 and c2 come from these two equations. Okay. So I have uh, y1 of t times c1. Now the c1 that comes out of that happens to be, well, c1 prime comes out of it, so I have to integrate. I have to integrate c1 prime. So c1 prime that comes out of that is a, is a minus y2 times the f dt, and then there is a denominator, because if I have two equations and two unknowns, there's a little two by two determinant. I'll just call it w. It has a famous name in differential equations, and I'll tell you that name. w of t is the determinant of what I have there, y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. Two equations, some, they have to be independent, they have to be invertible to give me, and this is, it's this determinant that, that's the critical thing. So that's y1, y2 prime minus y2, y1 prime. That's the function. Remember, we know y1 and y2. The whole deal is starting with y1 and y2 null solutions and combining them. And you see, there's a first, that, that's the, this is the c1, and now I have to add in the c2. You know, it looks a little messy, but it's just an integral. It's just an integral. So now what is y2 of t multiplied by? Well, it's multiplied by c2. And since this equation gives me c2 prime, I'm going to have to integrate to get c2. And it turns out to be y1 of t, f of t, dt, divided by that same determinant, w of t. This is, let me tell you its name. It's, it's named after a guy named Ronsky. So it's called the Ronskian. You can call it that or not. It's this. So we know y1 and y2. That means we plug those in, we find the Ronskian, we put that in these integrals, we have the y2s and the y1s, and we're given the f, and we integrate. Well, if we can integrate. I don't plan to go probably much beyond that. Just I'll stop there. That's a formula for the answer. Oh, well, I won't completely stop there. Let me do an example. Let me do an example. So um, let's see. I guess my example will be constant coefficient equation. So constant coefficient, when, so what are the null solutions for a constant coefficient equation? There. You, you remember what happens with constant coefficients. You plug in, you, you get s squared plus b s plus c times the, you're looking for, you're, you're trying for an exponential, and it'll work. So I, I plug, this, this is looking for null solutions, because we have to do, have those to start. They, they are the y1 and y2 in my formula. So my variation of parameters, the whole new, new thing is completed there. Just if I want an example, I have to solve the differential equation. And for that, believe me, I'm going to make b and c constant. So I solve this equation. So I, that, this gives me, of course, I can cancel the e to the st because it's never 0. So this has to be 0. 
And that has two roots, and the quadratic formula tells me those two roots, S1 and S2, and then my null solutions are Y1 is e to the S1t, and Y2 is e to the S2t. Okay. Good. Good. Now, I'm ready to go. I'm going to put those into this formula. I have to do the Ronskian, and I need another blackboard. Sorry. This is the only video so far that went to a third board. Can you remember? I need the Ronskian, and then I'll reproduce the, so there's, I'll, I'll, let me copy again. Y1 is e to the S1t, Y2 is e to the S2t, and now that Ronskian is Y1, Y2 prime minus Y2, Y1 prime. And what does that come out to be? Y1 is e to the S1t. Y2 prime is the derivative of that, so it's an S2 e to the S2t. That's this term, gave me that. And now I subtract y2, which is there, y1 prime, which is the derivative of this, brings down an s1. You, you see the beauty of all these formulas. Well, beautiful if you like formulas. Not everybody does. OK, so now I know the, every, all the terms, and I'm prepared to write again my formula for y of t, my solution. This is, this is the climax now. I'm going to use the formula that came from variation of parameters, and I'm going to put in that function, that function, and that w, and I'm going to see what I have. OK. So do you remember it was y1 times an integral. Oh, I had better use a, a variable of integration here. I don't want to put t in there, because t is the limit of integration. So y1, do you remember? It was a minus y2 e to the s2, I'll use just capital T, time divided by w. You remember there's an f of t, and there's a dt and I'm using a capital T as the dummy variable, and in the bottom goes W, which is S2 minus S1 e to the S1t e to the S2t. That was the first term. Th this was the C1 that multiplied Y1. Now I have to remember the y2, the second null solution, times its c2, and that was the integral. And again, and now I have a plus sign, I think, so it was put in parentheses there. That was the w in the bottom. So it was e to the s1t, f of t, dt, and that same w down here, s2, minus s1 e to the s1t e to the s2t. OK. That's the, calcula the variation of parameters formula for, the, the, for these nice null solutions. It, it doesn't get better than this. And in fact, I guess I can cancel e to the s2t's there. I, I can cancel e to the s1t's there. I can put this up with a minus exponent. Oh, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So here is a constant, S2 minus S1, the same for both terms. Then I'll put this up here as a negative exponent, so there's an e to the S1t. I'll get, uh, you, might, you might even, you might see this coming. I, I get this 1 over S2 minus S1. And then I have the integral. And here I have an f of t in both integrals. So let me just 
put that f of t down. Okay? And I have a dt. And then what do I what else do I have? I have this thing, which I can put inside, but with a small t, it, it, it's, I, I'm not integrating that. I think if you look there, you have e to the s1 t, and then this will come up with a minus sign. Does that look good to you for the first term? And then the second term will have uh, that same 1 over s2 minus s1. Now what do I have? Uh, e to the s2 t is going to come up with a minus sign, so I have an integral of e to the s2 t minus t. I think there's a minus, ha ha, don't forget that minus, Professor Strang. Okay, and f of t dt. Now, right there, I'm going to put the answer. I'm going to put the answer. And, and for me, this was the highlight of the whole thing. I didn't know what would come out of variation of parameters. I wasn't, I'm not at all an expert in that. But I just followed the rules. Put in these two. Uh, null solutions, computed W, put it all in, ended up with this answer, and, and then I was very happy to recognize what this answer was. This answer is the integral of something times, this is the integral from 0 to t, of something times f of t dt, and what is that something? It comes from that term divided by this with a minus sign, and this term divided by that with a minus sign. And when you put those in, what do you get but the impulse response, g, or that I've called g of t. And it's at t minus t. So here you go. This is the big moment. g of t minus capital T f of t dt. Focus camera and attention on that last result. So that's the formula that we end up with from, uh, calc from the variation of parameters applied to the constant coefficient problem. It's given us what we already knew. It's told us that the solution, the particular solution, y of t, is the integral of the inputs, the right-hand side, the forcing term, f of t, times the growth term, the impulse response. We could imagine that at every time t, we have an impulse of size f of t, and that impulse grows by the impulse response, g, over the remaining time until it gets us to here. Let me just clean that up. And then we have to take all those inputs. So we integrate over all those inputs, and we get that answer. That's the ultimate formula for the solution to our, to our differential equations, to our linear constant coefficient differential equation. So we've reproduced that formula in the one case, constant coefficient case, when we can find the null solutions and run through, run this variation of parameters formula right through to the end, and that's the end. Thank you.